So let's do a quick recap of what you probably already know about the Fractal Protocol. The Fractal Protocol is infrastructure for radical data markets, a decentralized data commons on top of which novel applications can emerge. It will remove every gatekeeper except for users themselves, who should be able to put their own data to work for them. Currently, there's just no good way for users to monetize their data directly. Most data markets are controlled by large gatekeeping organizations that pick and choose who gets to buy and sell. A decentralized data commons allows people to become active participants in the data economy and to own their fair share of it. This data commons is powered by an incentive system that attracts data growth and reliability. It will help innovation by enabling new business models based on data. And we want to help enable a permissionless data market, because decentralization is meritocratic. It rewards outcomes, results, not handshakes. Ethereum brought us Uniswap, Ava, Yearn, Alchemix. So what can be built on top of Fractal? So how do we grow this data commons? First, we build the market-leading KYC DID wallet, the Fractal wallet that you already know, and that it is integrated with the protocol. Second, we incentivize others to provide the data that they already collect. Think at tech players like DMPs or data brokers. And third, more importantly and bigger, we incentivize others to start collecting data and providing new data sets to the protocol. Think helping browser extensions monetize their work. Let's take a look at how data consumers work. First, anyone can consume data from the protocol as long as they follow the rules. There's access rules in terms of how can you access data, there's payment rules in terms of how much the user wants for their data, etc. And the protocol enforces that these rules are followed. Unlocking siloed data, remember, is very important for innovation to happen. And why would people buy data? Well, first of all, because they already do. Uh, the ad tech market is powered by it, as we've seen before, and ad tech companies already buy troves of data. Why would they buy it with us? Well, we charge no fees, we charge no rent, we don't take any margins, so it is cheaper to use us than existing services. And finally, because there's mechanisms in the protocol to help ascertain the quality, the accuracy of the data. And how will they buy data? Well, there will be different ways to do that. One of them is a user at a time. If you think of a website that is visited by a user, they can negotiate that between themselves. Think news websites, think advertising websites with products or e-commerce even. Another way to do this would be in bulk, so through a data marketplace, for advertisers to build campaigns or researchers to do, conduct their research, data brokers to create audiences. And the way that this data can be consumed will vary based on the user preferences because we can't just share data in plain text to everybody. And in 2021, we have better methods of doing that. We have notions of data rental. We have notions of selective disclosure. We have notions of compute to data where the code comes to your data and not the other way around and you remain in control. As for data providers, they can be, well, anyone. Just like with data consumers, as long as they follow the rules, the protocol is welcoming their data. So they could be user applications like websites, browser extensions, native apps. They could be the existing data collectors like DMPs and data brokers. They could be identity verifiers like Fractal ID or even new value add services built on top of this permissionless marketplace. Think a decentralized world of cohorts and audience builders or fraud verifiers. Think credit checks for example. And why would they provide this data? Well, the protocol incentivizes data providers with FCL rewards. Plus, once we enable a buy side, real revenues will flow to data providers. Remember, we don't charge rent, we don't take any fees. So whatever the market is paying right now will go to you. We create a denser market. It is not easy at all to sell data if you're a large player. And there will be a lot more data once people can look at it, transform it, and re-contribute it to the protocol. How would data be provided? They just need to use an application that is built on the protocol. That's it. That is why we're developing a partner network. We build the SDKs. You don't need to understand blockchain. So how does the protocol and the ad tech industry 
play together? Well, first, we're going after this industry because it is absolutely gigantic. It's the world's largest consumer of data right now, and it makes for an easier case to start. But ad tech is a very complicated beast. So we'll start at the edges where integrations are simpler. Our main focus right now is to incentivize the data provisioning to build supply, and then we focus on building a buy side. So here's a couple of examples of how this could work. The first one is a data marketplace. So imagine that a DMP is looking for data to create audiences for aftermarket products. An example would be people that recently bought printers so that aftermarket cartridge sellers can target them with timely deals. How would a data marketplace based on the protocol help with this request? Well, first, the DMP specifies what they're looking for. And let's say they ask the marketplace for 20 million people who bought a printer in the last 30 days. Now, the marketplace doesn't hold any data itself, so its job is to try and meet this order. In response to this query by the DMP, it posts a message on a billboard saying, I am looking for people who bought a printer in the past 30 days. Our embedded SDKs that are installed in the Fractal Wallet and the partner applications, they're monitoring this billboard and can reply to its messages. So those that belong to people who purchased the printer in the past 30 days, who are okay with sharing their data and who are okay with sharing it for this purpose, those reply to the billboard with a price. And after a predetermined timeout period, the marketplace tells the buyer that it could find 10 million people and what the price for the whole data set would be. Another example is what you get when extensions sell directly, browser extensions sell directly to publishers, to websites. So, for example, Netflix could be paying you for your YouTube history so that they can give you better recommendations. Or a news website can let you pass paywalls in exchange for your demographic data because they can get paid more by advertisers. Let's look at the several benefits for the different players involved here. So for normal internet users like me, what we get at launch is a ton of rewards in FCL, and we know that we're supporting a data market revolution. But what we're working towards is to turn exploited data slaves to empowered data subjects. We want an active participation and fair share in the data economy by data workers like me that provide data to the market. We want a freer, more open and abundant web we want better and more customized apps that are able to be built on top of this data infrastructure. We want data portability to avoid platform lock-in. We want data unions to engage in collective action and push back against the oligopolists. And we certainly want a way to generate income from this data, to use it as collateral. And publishers? Well, there's a few for them as well. They can see new and improved revenue streams. They can get themselves incentives for providing data to the protocol, their first party data. They can get better programmatic advertising yield by enriching the data that goes in the ad request with data that they get from the Fractal protocol. They can develop a much better understanding of their audience, enriching their own first party data sets, increasing the credibility that advertisers place on them and they're able to customize content based on it. And above all, they can lower their dependency on Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. For advertisers, they also can get new revenue streams because they also have data that they can contribute. But more importantly, they'll have access to previously inaccessible data that was locked in and that we're making available. Google searches, Amazon purchases, platform-specific data that belongs to you and not to the platforms. And for them, better audiences that they can now build on this data means better targeting. Obviously, as seen before, they get cheaper and more accurate data because we charge no rent and we're not taking our margins. So they also stand to have a lower dependence on GAFA. Let's take a bit of a deeper dive into the Fractal Protocol and cover other topics that we haven't talked about much so far. How do we incentivize data providers? Well, we do that with newly minted FCL to grow the commons. 400 million new tokens will be minted over 50 years in our substrate network, and we will use as many of them as we can to drive adoption of the protocol. We have a very, very basic mechanic right now that will improve as we develop this further. 
one of the ways that we've thought about doing things is to simply subsidize existing purchases because if somebody is buying your data, then they have done the job of figuring out that it's good. So we can just put additional incentives on top of that. We can develop curation markets and staking and slashing mechanics where other folks can come in and through their machine learning, artificial intelligence, statistic techniques, they can try to ascertain the quality of your data and whether or not you're a human or you're a robot because nobody really wants data that comes from robots. We can rely on multiple attestations from the same facts to lend data additional legitimacy and be able to fine tune the incentives that we're giving out to the data that yields the most quality. The role of the fractal wallet is essentially to be the first application that runs on the protocol. It leverages a large base of verified users. It will help us drive adoption. And more importantly, it is a test bed for the SDKs that we're building that our partners are integrating. It allows us to dog food a little bit and make sure that we build this in the right way. So what will be there at launch? We'll have a substrate based blockchain that is capable of maintaining accounts that is addresses the new FCL token, minting it and its balances, and the incentive mechanics that make the whole thing work. We are building SDKs, the ones that I said are living inside of Fractal Wallet and partner applications that obey a certain data schema standard, which is important so that applications know how to interoperate. And this SDK tra transforms any browser extension into a data host for the Fractal protocol. We're looking for additional partners for our mainnet MVP. The Fractal Wallet is the pilot protocol application, but it won't be the only one. What we're building is infrastructure and we want to reward partners who integrate our SDK so that they can enable their audiences to be rewarded for providing data as well. The Fractal protocol is still very new and as such quite hard to define. Let's go over a few important points. First of all, the protocol is open and free. It's open source, we don't charge rent, we don't take fees, and it's permissionless because anybody can participate, consume data or buy data and govern the protocol to help it evolve. It is a standard for exchanging data in a fair and open way. Standards are important because they enable interoperability and innovation. And it is a decentralized protocol that is governed and evolved by all token holders. The Fractal Protocol is also a standard for exchanging data in a fair and open way. Standards are important because they foster interoperability and they enable innovation. And by being decentralized, governed and evolved by all FCL holders, we can make sure that it takes all stakeholder opinions into account. The Fractal Protocol fights techno-feudalism of the data oligopoly that we live in. We want data subjects, we don't want data slaves. And if this is your data, you should be seeing some value. It also helps us improve the ad market because it disintermediates the giants that currently control it. Decentralization, remember, rewards outcomes, not handshakes or backroom deals. The Fractal Protocol is a plot to save the web. It loosens the oligopolistic grip that it feels right now and it gives control to its users, rewards its contributors, and improves outcomes for the advertisers that fund the web. It makes data unions possible. And this is important because a single data worker has no power against Google or Facebook. Collective action is the only way that we can do to help make sure that we get our fair share in this data economy. The Fractal Protocol enables radical data markets to transform the ad ecosystem and beyond because if Ethereum enabled Uniswap and Ava and Yearn, Alchemix, then what can be built on top of a permissionless data market like what Fractal is building? The protocol helps users participate in the data economy by legitimizing them as data owners and by putting them in control. Imagine that you don't pay for the internet with your personal data but that the internet pays you for it. Most folks don't realize how this new data economy that we live in is powered by them. The online advertising market that funds the web is worthless without data. Who provides this data? I do, you do, it belongs to us, and we should be getting paid.